Most of us never think about tow trucks. That's because most of us hope we never need one. But you'll never look at a tow truck the same after visiting a truly one of a kind museum in Chattanooga. So if you're up for a trip down tow truck memory lane, this place might pull you in for a little while. There's a tow truck museum and they think, well, that's interesting. You know, I've been to car museums, I've been to all this kind of thing, and they'll come in here and they'll go, wow, there is a lot in here, a lot more than I expected. It all started with a group of towing professionals who decided to preserve their industry's history and share some of it with the public. The result is a unique little attraction with a big name, the International Towing and Recovery Hall of Fame and Museum. Niles Vincent, the resident historian, showed me around. The industry is kind of one that people kind of brush over, but it's a very proud, very rich history. It's essentially a Samaritan industry. They, they get out there and they say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm willing to come pick you up when you can't get up yourself. The museum's in Chattanooga for good reason. You see, the tow truck was invented here, all thanks to an interior decorator and mechanic named Ernest Holmes. In a way, this is how it all started. You see, Mr. Holmes opened a garage to work on cars, and, well, he realized after a while it'd be easier to bring the cars to him rather than work on the cars in the field. The result? The Model 680. Why 680? That was the cost. The foundation for his invention was a 1913 Cadillac with a fairly stout factory chassis. The towing mechanism is a system of ropes and pulleys, hand cranked, of course. Once the company kind of got started, he started selling the wreckers internationally. I mean, it, it exploded because, you know, there was no such thing as a tow truck prior to that. Vehicles became more prominent. The Model T was everywhere. So, you know, that, that became very useful for people on the road. Holmes Company not only manufactured complete tow trucks, it also made rigs that mounted to existing truck beds. With the advent of World War II, American wreckers headed to Europe to give the Allies a lift. Holmes made over 7,200 W-45s. This one was part of the Red Ball Express that carried critically needed supplies to the front lines in France. This monster wrecker was also built for the military, but never saw action. Holmes' company had built four of these wreckers. They were prototypes for the military. They had been contracted. Well, unfortunately, the military didn't use it, and they kind of just fell into disarray. This particular one that exists in the museum is only one of four, and it's the only one that survived, and it was restored in the mid to late 80s, and it's still considered the largest wrecker mounted on a truck in the world. Well, from the biggest to the fastest, this is the one you'd want for speedy service. In the 70s, they wanted to see if how fast they could get a tow truck, a fully built, fully set up tow truck that would work, you know, anywhere in the world as far as getting out on the road and picking somebody up. And they wanted to get it out on the Indianapolis Speedway and see how fast they could get it to go. Ended up breaking, I believe, about 109 miles an hour. So it ended up being the fastest recorded tow truck in the world at the time. All the vehicles are on loan from proud owners who had them meticulously restored to their former towing glory. It's like restoring any vehicle. It becomes very specialized and very, um, you know, you have to have parts machined and, you know, it has to be restored in a very specific way. A tow truck driver has an important job, but it's a dangerous one as well. It's estimated that a driver is killed every six days. That's why in 2006, the Wall of the Fallen was dedicated to honor men and women who lost their lives in the line of service. Scott Hickson is a veteran driver from Florida we met. To him, witnessing the wall was an emotional experience. Uh, it's quite awe-inspiring. It brings out several emotions. It's quite humbling. Have you lost a lot of friends? I've lost a lot of friends. I've uh, had a lot of friends get hit. Myself, I've been hit. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the Towing and Recovery Museum is not your run-of-the-mill roadside attraction. And while most of us hope we never need one, 
It's fascinating to hook up with all this truck history and tradition. You can't leave this place without a new appreciation for tow trucks and the people who drive them. I would just hope that they would be more informed uh, about the industry, realize that there's people out there that work hard every day to make sure the roads stay clear and are there to help them. And at the same time, you know, they, they come away understanding a part of history that is not often discussed. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't talk about tow trucks very often or where they came from.